and, and your automatic focus is on that, it's pleasing, right? So it pulls your eye to that. So if you're a mechanic and you're trying to work on several projects in the garage, getting the garage organized and dialed in, your tools displayed on a, on a tack board or, you know, really putting effort and energy into that is going to help it become a focus point. But making a routine doesn't have to be, you know, a military up at five, 100 burpees, 10 gallons of water. You know, you don't have to get that incredibly obsessed with it. It doesn't have to be that hard. Again, this goes back to the very beginning of this segment is that it has to be easy. It has to be something you're realistically going to do. So if you constantly sleep in or you constantly wake up tired, maybe it's time to start thinking about a different bedtime routine as a means for self-care. And then full stop, that could be the thing you're working on for self-care. You don't need to then layer in the eating and exercising and getting healthy and smoothies and finances in order and all of the laundry done and you know you don't have to get crazy insane just start with one thing one thing that you can focus on that you can do for self-care until you become a badass at it until you believe this is no longer a quote routine that I have to have in place this is something I just do that's the point you want to get to because your routine shifts all the time it changes based on your life your circumstances, but the core of it can always be the same because we really want to get out of this habit of perfectionism. We really want to break up with perfectionism. We want to allow for all the different mistakes that we can make. And that brings me to number three, do not dismiss thought work. It's so important. If you're having a really hard time getting self-care and you're you're having a hard time applying yourself to, to get yourself to follow through, Please do not dismiss the power of thought work because self-inflicted suffering, like overeating or self-inflicted pressure, all those things, if you're not working on those problems, those, those are your problems. Those are things you can control. And so much is out of our control right now. So instead of being overwhelmed by all the things you can't control, the things you can't fix, start focusing on what you can and, and so break it down, you know, get into the thought work of this whole process. So think about it. What thoughts give you self-esteem? What thoughts make you feel in control? Get a piece of paper out and write this down. I'll tell you, for me, a thought that gives me self-esteem is I am a badass. This is part of my affirmation work. And you can change the thoughts you have about yourself through routine. So working on problems that are not yours is going to create the anxiety. It's going to create the spiral. But focusing yourself on what you can control, that's going to make you feel better. That's going to help you focus in. So make a list of your top five thoughts that give you self-esteem. The the top five thoughts that help you feel focused. Another practice that you could do as a result of thought work or that falls under that category is finish this sentence. I deserve blank. That's why I believe blank. So I use this practice a lot when I find myself just kind of getting out of control. I use this practice in so many different aspects of my life it really helps bring you back down. It really helps you to focus. So example, I deserve good health. That's why I believe breakfast is important. And do you see how that powerful practice just pulls you right into specifying what's good for you and what you believe and something you can control? without a a disproportional clutching. And something I want you guys to consider as an idea for thought work you could do this week is I want you to watch the video Snoop Dogg's I Want to Thank Me. It's I'm sure you can find it on YouTube. Just Google it. And this speech, when he's getting he's getting his name in the Hollywood star um, on the Hollywood Boulevard, and, and in this acceptance speech, he really starts to say, you know, I thank myself for all this hard work. And there's so much power in that practice. Let's all strive and endeavor to be as freaking smart and badass as Snoop Dogg. I mean, repeat after me. Say your name. You are a badass motherfucker. 
and I want to thank you for, and then list it off, make a list. Because when you go through that practice, when you use these thought work ideas, they will bring you back down. They're going to help you make self-care a priority without it being complicated. It takes two minutes to write down a sentence and fill in the blank. You can throw it away. I don't care. There's nothing that you need to do beyond that. It's just the intentional practice itself that's actually helpful. The other process that you need to know about self-care, number four, is allow yourself to fail. You have got to allow yourself to fail more often. You have to practice talking good to yourself while you're failing because it's it's what's going to happen anyway. Why can't we get to the place where we ex- where we accept the fact that we are not perfect, that our brains can imagine a better version than we are capable of enacting at any one point in time. Can we work on it to get there? Sure. But I'm not going to wake up tomorrow speaking a foreign language. I have to work at it. And it's the same thing. You have to fail at it. That's what putting in effort is. It's just failing as fast as you can until you get to that place where you've met your expectations of what the best version of that is. And I want to make sure that you understand this is not the same thing as becoming perfect. It's not perfecting something. You don't perfect something until you've done it for 10,000 hours or more. Look it up. It's a whole concept. There's videos, things like that. You have to accept the fact that your brain can come up with a lot more than you can make happen until you fail at it, until you try it all the different ways. It took me a long time to perfect podcasting because I had to use software that wasn't easy to figure out what was compatible for me, what was going to work to get this show going. You have to allow yourself to fail and you have to talk nicely to yourself through that failure because that vulnerability helps you build strength. When you allow yourself to not know something and you don't treat yourself like garbage because you don't know it, it allows you to continually look for things you don't know because you no longer fear them and they no longer make you feel bad. So you don't associate them with negativity and that lets you grow. That lets you reach out and expand. And last but not least, a huge process of self-care. This goes to the self-talk. Get it in check now. Know it. Learn it. And from this moment right now, make the commitment that you are no longer allowed to mindlessly talk about yourself like shit. And I get it that most people don't love themselves. Most people have a really unhealthy relationship with themselves. But you're going to have to start practicing talking to yourself like someone you love. You don't have to do any other self-care today. But if you can get into the practice of or catch yourself when you're talking crappy about yourself and immediately replace it with, it's okay, I'm doing the best I can. That's the aim. Because then it helps you learn and unlearn, right? You're unlearning the shitty negative default and you're learning the positive one, which is going to help you. Now, let me be clear about this. This sounds like a super simple process, but it is not. It takes time. You may fail and that's okay. Just get good at catching yourself, talking to yourself like shit or talking shit about yourself and replace it with something positive. And it doesn't have to be sunshine and rainbows positive. It can just be like, all right, I recognize I'm talking crappy about myself. I probably going to just walk this back a second. You know, give yourself just a tiny bit of grace until that tiny bit of grace becomes a bit of grace. And then that bit of grace becomes, I give myself grace. And that becomes, I am grace. And sometimes I make mistakes. But failing is the fastest way to success. So you're going to have to learn to accept failure and talk to yourself better about it. Okay, so now that we've got the foundation, let me just go over those those five foundations of self-care. Number one, know what self-care is to you. Number two, make a routine. Number three, do not dismiss the thought work. Number four, allow yourself to fail. And number two, Five, get your, self, get your negative self-talk in check. 
Okay, so now that we've got all that in place, let's go through my list of 20 new self-care ideas. You can always find this list on our website, www.selfcareissexy.com. Number one, work with crystals. Number two, skincare. There's this stuff called uh, Herbe Mate. It's the resurfacing energy facial. Oh, it's amazing. Try that. Number three, drink coconut water. Number four, add essential oils to your feet. We actually have an episode coming up with another doTERRA gal who's going to walk us through different um, essential oils and their benefits. Number five, know your signs of depression. Get good at spotting that stuff. Number six, soak in Epsom salt. Number seven, listen to white noise. Number eight, do self-massage work. Number nine, crafting. Number 10, incorporate standing every hour. Number 11, turn on a diffuser. Number 12, meditation. Number 13, work with singing bowls. Number 14, warm shower. Number 15, single task focus. Practice on focusing on one task, completing that task, focusing on the next. Number 16, write positive affirmations to say to yourself throughout the day. Number 17, those self-heating eye masks. Number 18, check out this concept called 487 breathing. It's really awesome. Number 19, break up with perfection. And number 20, buy yourself a new pair of sexy undies. All right, friends, that's it for this week. Thank you for joining me. If you have a story you'd like to share and you want to be on the show, please email me. It's Chris, K-R-I-S at selfcareissexy.com. Stay tuned because we've got some really great content coming your way. And remember that self-care is sexy. We're giving you permission to put yourself first.